Uh, and we're live. <laughs> cool. uh, we're talking I about swear there's always a great quote right before we go live. <laughs> um, that's interesting. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> talking to us? You guys, I guess, in theory, the Facebook Live world or the YouTube world watching later. Yeah. I'm on my second day alone. This is the most alone time I've had in like three months. So I almost bagged this. I almost, I almost sent a text saying I'm, I'm, I'm just enjoying not talking to people. So I'm going to keep that going. <laughs> See you next week. But obligation kicked in. So I'm here, but not liking any of it or any of you. So it's okay. <laughs> Rory's here, but he's he's got some feelings about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, well, I Rory and his feelings aside, aside, as important as they are, <laughs> we're just saying, let's just identify. Rory has feelings. <laughs> I just want to be. Yeah, clear. No, I, I, see, I've got a handful, not a full palette, but I've got a handful. <laughs> he feels anger, disgust, and occasionally sadness. It's not, a, not a full fifty-two card anger. deck. You say you don't feel anger. I, I didn't at all until the uh, concussion started kicking in. I, I would say I've gone the last 30 years without feeling anger at all. And then it, and then the last four or five years, it started kicking up. And I man, say, I'm, I'm not angry about anything. I'm just angry. Randomly. It's, it's, which evidently is the side effect of having way too many concussions. Where do we draw the line between extreme annoyance and anger? Just out of curiosity. Okay. I'd it's a difference. Most of the time, I felt a lot of disappointment. <laughs> I see humans not living up to, I don't even want to say their full potential, but like one tenth of their absolute crippled up potential. <laughs> I, I mean, that, that does annoy me. Yes. Uh, I, saw, um, I saw the comedian Bill Burr live on Friday night. A, tons of fun. I needed that laugh. I haven't laughed that long, that hard in a long time. B, he had a great bit about growing up in Boston and having like an angry Irish father and his father would blow up at people. So he's like, I'm an angry Irish guy. I blow up. My adaptation is I blow up about stuff. So when my daughter, when I don't, when I get mad or whatever, I want to make sure my daughter understands I'm not blowing up at her. I'm daddy's blowing up at the iPhone <laughs> or daddy's blowing up at the circumstance. Daddy doesn't blow up at people anymore. So Good for him, that sounds completely healthy. Right. Uh, <laughs> have you heard yeah, Bill he's a pretty angry guy yeah that's probably true it was funny I, just uh, Boston. this is I, also possible i was watching uh justified rory's favorite show and in the first well, episode there's a can't you much better that's fair there's an episode uh where the main character is talking to his ex-wife and she says, you hide it really well and most people can't see it, but you're probably the angriest man I've ever met. Which makes me wonder whether or not, Rory, you've been angry the whole time and the concussions just made you notice it. Like Bruce one Banner. The, <laughs> one of the scariest things, uh, one of my friends, I don't want to go into details, but one of my friends brought his mom in because for obvious dementia. And the doctor said she doesn't have dementia. She has just hated your father for so many years so intensely that it, it reads as dementia. Uh, Long-term anger can have many of the same symptoms. And it's like, and that was his first, my mom hates my dad. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's hated your dad for like 30 or 40 years intensely. My mom hates my dad. <laughs> no! It was, it, was, it was not a good day for him. <laughs> Oh, man. So on that light note, what yeah. we're talking about today is, um, so one of the major challenges in self-protection that Rory pointed out at one point, and I'm sure others have either picked up on or pointed out even maybe before him, was we don't spend a lot of time understanding bad guys. The entire premise of self-protection is dealing with bad guys or the possibility of dealing with bad guys and we don't really spend much time talking about it and or we do and it's in these ridiculous terms and we have to come up with all the othering and the names and all the other stuff that at least to me screams I'm terrified of these people and thus I must mock them so how do we understand and analyze 
bad guys and their behaviors while A, leaving our emotions at the door and B, not letting our own morality derail our ability to understand other people's morality because they are people. Paul, now, I think Malcolm, realistically, almost every word you said would have to be walked out for people to grasp it. Well, that, and that's, this is, this is not a 10 minute conversation, but they never are. No, they really aren't. Sorry, Facebook, you got to join the cohort. I don't even call it the ten dollar level, because this is going to be a long hour and a half. I can already Listen, see. Listen, we're we're not going to talk about shallow shit just to make you happy. So, okay, okay. So, so walking out is it's one of those bad people are bad. They do bad things. This is mm -hmm. this is objective. Anyone who says there's no evil in the world, I could show them some case studies. And if they can sit there and look at there's no evil in the world, then they need to be put down because they're so fucking stupid. Um. If someone can, can take a two-year-old baby, cut his belly open with a rusty tin can lid and rape the wound, evil exists in the universe. There, there's no, well, I can understand that. You just need to see his point of view. There's no point of view where that's a cool. Um, so so it's, it's, there is some objectively evil shit in the universe. And if you, if you insist on evil, no, evil is never an objective. That's a subjective term. It's like, no, fuck that. You need, you need to have some beyond the pale. You need to have some line. If it crosses this line, that's where evil starts right there. It's cannibalism rape, evil. There's no good cannibalism rape. There's no questionable or semi-good cannibalism rape. It, it's just not something that happens. So, so setting that up and setting up that, as, as crazy as sound, um, that's, oh, and, and this one would take, a long time to walk out. Um, I do have subjective morals. Okay, there's some things that I find wrong, but I understand that society doesn't necessarily agree with me. Different societies don't necessarily agree with me. So, so these we can talk about rationally, but there's some lines where if you think this is acceptable, you're a bad guy too. If you mm. think you could possibly, in, unless you have that kind of, of strong line, Okay, there is no good way to rape a child. Mm -hmm. There is no good way to lure someone to your house, rape them, and then eat them. There, there just is no good variation of Dahmer. Are you yeah. looking for recipes? Because I'm not sure what we're talking about here. <laughs> <laughs> we're, not, we're not laughing at the idea. It's just so right, it's, that's, <laughs> but, but, but some people would feel obligated to argue that every standard is subjective and to an extent that's true but if there's not a certain level um then everything collapses yeah um and there's some things that are that are useful to believe that may or may not be true i believe and always will believe in free will because if i ever say there's no free will then there's no point never trying to correct your action there's no point never punishing there's no point and if you tell people there's no free will then they'll act like jackasses if you tell them that there is free will and they'll be punished for the decisions they make, then whether free will exists or not, they'll act like there is and they'll make the decisions. Whether, whether how we choose a moral stance becomes part of the environment that animals adapt to. Mm -hmm. okay, so, so and, and that's just one of like the 20 things in your initial sentence that we'd have to actually walk out. Good. Um, so getting into their heads thinking that they're different than that criminals people who do horrible horrible things are, are hugely different from us is useless you can't get into their heads they aren't that different um i i can guarantee and, and we use this in class all the time almost everyone listening to this has one hobby that they think makes the world make sense makes them feel slightly superior to everyone else that um if they made it illegal right paul's paul's waving his dojo it's a very real possibility that someone at some point may decide that for the moral good, it's obviously true people should not practice stylized symbolic violence. So we need to shut down every martial art in the world and all the serious martial artists and, and they would be right from their point of view. And every serious martial artist would go, well, fuck that. And they go underground and they'd go dark and they would become legally and ethically the same as say child molesters. Because child molesters also do things that society thinks is bad, 
Did they I've been told this for the last year and a half. <laughs> I've been told this for the last year and a half, but for health purposes. Yeah. Uh, right. As opposed so, to. Right. So, so sitting there, I'm, I'm not saying that there's a moral equivalency between martial arts and child molesters. I'm saying that no. child molesters think about molesting children a lot the way you think about whatever hobby you're obsessed with. Mm. So, so I'm not saying that this, there's a moral equivalency. I'm not saying it's the same thing, but I'm saying you can't understand their thought processes. I just twitched so hard on child molester and hobby as being as, in the as same sentence. Should, right? Right? <laughs> it's, but it, but it's an obsession. Same <laughs> as people get martial arts as an obsession. People get, you know, whatever they have. So it's one of those, I, I can't understand being attracted to ch children. I can totally understand obsession. And the idea mm -hmm. people made it illegal, I wouldn't stop. I hide it. I'm going to try not to get caught. Um, that part. And within that, it's like, could you talk them out of what they plan to do? And it's like about as much as you could talk me out of training. Yeah. So it's, it, we can understand the mechanisms and we can get into the head. Um, but this, and this is one of the things that's so hard for us not to put, because at that point, putting a moral, either moral equivalency as well. Are you saying that martial arts are the same as, no, I'm not. Um, are you saying they aren't the same? No, I'm not either. It depends on which part of the argument you're looking at, mm. but it becomes very easy to dismiss it. And this is when we start putting, I can take the moral label off of a hideous crime like child molestation and still predict what the bad guy's gonna do. If yeah. I put the moral thing on it, then I tend to use that as a restriction. Well, that's so immoral, I can't possibly understand it. So I can't possibly predict his behavior. So I can't possibly prevent his behavior because I'm too good a person to understand it. Mm -hmm. And that's that, not useful at all. And that to me is the issue with a lot of when people talk about bad guys, because what they do is they make them into a separate species that are impossible to understand and therefore impossible to predict and therefore very difficult to stop. Because if I admit that in a perverse way, the logic follows, if I've accepted the presuppositions and I can follow the logic from point A to point B to point C, I think for a lot of people, they think that shit is contagious. So they think if I can see it, therefore it must be me. What does this say about me? Am I actually a secret bad guy? And it comes back to a point you made a while back about people and their chihuahua sized dark sides they assume that there isn't an enormous difference between being able to, in an abstract light of day, see the logic and actually doing something. Like, they don't understand be, how, how big the gap is. This may be entirely self-serving. Probably. Um, Most maybe things the, the way I want to see the world, but I see that the inability to see that makes it more likely to, for you to fall down that trap. Mm. the ability to see it i think the, the the people that say that could never happen to me i'm too good a person are the ones that tend to replicate evil because they think what they're doing isn't evil without ever they're, realizing that what the bad guy thinks they're doing isn't evil too so quit doing the fucking same thing because they they end up being the self-justifying date rapist who's trying to find all the little false equivalencies rather than accepting that people do bad shit. I'm capable of doing some of this bad shit. So I need to be very careful. And because I can understand it and I'm capable of it, I need to be watchful about it. Maybe I won't do that, but there's my, there's a flavor for me that if I'm not careful, I can very easily move into being an abusive, being a dickhead, being manipulative, being unnecessarily or irresponsibly violent, et cetera. And, this one, and you could edit this. Okay. Six. Uh, <laughs> and I had like five different things I was trying to squeeze in there and you guys were rolling for everybody who's watching this is what it's like at 7 30 when we sign off for the regular conversation and Rory and Malcolm continue to go for another hour <laughs> and I like I just got to sit there like watching tennis volley back and forth so it's a lot of fun though okay, that actually happened exactly that Sunday <laughs> so we're going to sign off the live Wait, 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 wait. We got to comments, comments, comments. We, we got to involve the people in the conversation. Uh, the Gabe Cohen saying, good afternoon, gentlemen. Gabe, nice to see you. Um, see up? you, metaphorically speaking, on Facebook Live. You know about um, join the uh, Patreon, guys, 10, 10 bucks a month, and you get to jump into the next hour conversation and then the group where we hold, you know, conversations, quote, unquote, throughout the course of the week. So 
later. Thank you guys, Facebook, YouTube later for joining us. We'll see you guys later.